Now that wasn't too hard, folks. This is how we're going to break the ice this morning. Got a little black crappie right here who's wanting to pull like crazy. Let's flip him in here. He ain't that big, but now he wanted that underspin. Look how he eat that bait. Y'all see that? It is gone. The doggone it. The doggone underspin is gone. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? The doggone underspin is gone. Why? Because it's that good of a bait. It's an excellent bait year long, but especially, especially in conditions like this right here. And we'll talk about that, but look. Not that big of a crappie, but he absolutely eat it. Let's let him go. Okay, let's talk about it. First, the bait. What I'm using right here is a 1 16th of an ounce underspin, which, folks, I've been catching a lot of fish this fall, this winter, with this bait right here. And what I have on it, I use a lot of different jigs on the back of an underspin. What I have on it today, well, is a crappie magnet. Okay. But that's a 1 16th of an ounce. Roadrunner underspin. Six pound test lower carbon line. Eight pound test braid. And this is a 2000 size Bass Pro Shop reel. It's a Johnny Morris reel, Daiwa, with a Ducket Crappie Slayer. And that's a six and a half foot long rod, light action, great tip action. It's just hard for a fish to come off with small hooks like this on this Roadrunner. My connection, well, is a double uni knot, and I got about five feet of fluorocarbon later on. That's basically about what I use when it comes to an underspin. And what I'm talking about today, it's cold and I'm underdressed big time the water temperature is 47 degrees on top we've been having a lot of cold 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 rainy weather here lately and a front come in about two days ago it's blowing out right now there's quite a bit of wind today and the water's starting to clear up it's a little bit high but about normal poo what happens is these fish get ultra shallow. They'll, some of these fish will seek flats off the main lake on muddy bottoms, not sandy bottoms. We're talking about muddy bottoms. That's what I look for. Muddy bottoms are darker. They hold heat. A cow of the sun, a couple of days of sunshine on these flats will warm it up where these fish will come off the main lake and they'll get back up on these shallow flats, two to three feet of water. Now an underspin is an effective way to catch them because what you can do is cover a lot of water with it and the spinner right here makes these fish believe that they're feeding on a, on a small shad, which there's a lot of small shad in here today. I've seen several flip, little bitty ones about the size of this underspin. Now there's a lot of different colors you could use in clarity of water like this, but the reason I'm using this color is because it's got a little bit of metal fleck in here. So when the sun's, when I'm reeling this bait through the water, not only is this spinner turning the reflective qualities of this metal fleck in this particular crappie magnet, it's gonna reflect like a shad. If you can see, there's a lot of reflection going on right there. And there's a lot of small shad in here about that size, so that's the reason I'm using this color today. And I believe that's why they're hitting it so well, is because there's a lot of shad, a lot of little thread fin shad in here. Matter of fact, the seagulls was in here a while ago for a while, eating a few of them. There's a little bit of a shad kill going on right now. The water's got that cold make another cast right down through there could be another now I'm sure there's some big crappie in here there's one 
That's a good fit. Look here. <laughs> I was talking about big crappie. That's a good one. Oh, me. That's a big crappie. Let's get the boat straightened out right here. He's doing some pulling. Oh, my goodness. That's a good one. I tell you what, I have had some fun. Folks, big fun. That's a good fish right there, folks. Now, it's not that big of a fish, but what makes it a big fish is I've caught several black crappie. I mean, there's quite a few in here. Actually, it's loaded up with them. And I was thinking, you know, they got to be some big fish in here or better fish. Sooner or later, one was going to bite. Well, I caught that, that crappie, about a nine-inch crappie, nine-and-a-half-inch crappie maybe made another cast said that and that one be it so what what's the point i'm trying to make i don't know because i'm excited let's let let's let him go go on back shook his head and skedaddled you can overpower this bait easy by reeling it too quick and fishing it way too aggressively what you want to do is finesse it in other words make a cast now these fish are about 16 inches deep so that baits at 16 inches right now and just reel it back slow that's all they are to it hold that rod tip up because we're we're in some shallow water right here so i'm doing that on purpose plus your sense of feel is just a lot better if you'll have that rod tip up. At around 10 o'clock, as, as that bait gets closer to the boat, well then lower your rod tip. But when it's way out there, hold it up high. Reel it real slow. And be feeling for that thump or pressure. A lot of times it's just a heavy pressure on the end of that bait or on the end of your rod to help you can feel a heavy, heavy pressure. But most of the time it's a thump. This late in the evening like this, what they do, a lot of times what they do is get real close to the bank. They'll get a little closer. There's a good fish right here. Oh my goodness. Oh my. That's what I thought. This is a good one. Whew. This is a good one, folks. Oh, let's net him. I want y'all to look what a slab. I have caught some big crappie. Oh my goodness. That is over two pounds. Over. Come here. That is a big fish. And I tell you what, that crappie right there is a big fish. That's a mountain sized crappie. What we're going to do is we're going to measure him. And I don't have nothing to weigh him with, but we can measure him. I've caught a lot of big crappie on a lot of different baits, but an underspin is no doubt in my opinion, for the better fish. And uh, here's, <laughs> here's a good one. Or for this part of the country, it's a big one. Look at there, what a, a slab. That is a trophy crappie in this neck of the woods. That's a black crappie. Beautiful, beautiful fish. And what we're going to do, we're going to measure him, and then we're going to let him go. This is a heavy fish. This fish is way over two pounds. And he's almost not quite. I believe if his tail wasn't messed up, it'd be 15 inches. But he's 14, if y'all can see that, about 14 and 7 eighths. 
but this fish is wide broad <laughs> big old crappie quit quit golly that crappie's strong <laughs> like strong strong fish go on back all right caught us in there big and that's a doggone king kong that was a king kong crappie that is what i've been trying to talk about whoa whoa go on fishing with him if you want to i ain't going to that old boy is 67 years old and he still picks his old brown looking old nasty boogers and he wipes them on his pants old streaked up brown boogers there's them seagulls i was talking about right there they're waiting for some shad to float up to the top there's a little bit of a shad kill going on right now water's getting extremely cold like i mentioned every once in a while you see one see one dive down like that to pick him up a shad what happens is a lot of these shad die the the weaker ones will and not only birds but fish will take advantage of that there he is oh my goodness this is a monster i hope we can keep him on this is a good one folks matter of fact i'm gonna get down here and get my net ready oh my my that fish slammed it oh he's barely hooked doggone he's barely hooked Looky there, what a fish. My goodness, what a slab. I knew when I set the hook into that one, it was a slab. I mean, that fish didn't, it was just like, like I've said many times, like setting it into a stump. I'm talking about. Folks, that's what we're talking about right there. Big old crappie. Great old big crappie fish that right there is what it's all about that's why i come out here every once in a while i'll catch one that big and bigger and, and every time i know what i got just as soon as i set the hook a, a fish of this size and bigger when they hit it's a different bite it's a different thump i know it just before i set the hook i know and that that fish is a blessing. Let's let him go. I don't know what else to say. I don't really know what else to say about it. It's just a blessing. Golly, what a fish. Let's see if we can't catch another. Whoa, there's some more out here. Some more. Some more. There's some more out in here. <laughs> Their little stomachs are full of shad. There's just so many shad that a little crappie can eat. But sometimes they'll try to eat one more, especially if there's some bad weather coming in. A day or two before a front is when they really, really get active. They try to gorge yourself and, and they don't hardly eat on the front, the actual front. Because their little stomach's done full, they don't have to. And that's just a natural instinct of all fish in the winter. That wind has completely died. So that's going to mean that I'm going to have to make longer casts. And be super, super quiet. You can talk as loud as you want to. Or whatever. The problem is, that especially in an aluminum boat or any boat, it's making a lot of sound with your feet. And of course, a trolling motor don't help. Or shutting a tackle box too, too hard. Or dropping stuff in the boat. Stuff like that. There's a fish. That's a crappie. 
Stuff like that is what keeps you from catching fish in shallow water. Now that's a little bass. Look here. A little large mouth hit it. Sure did. All right, get on back in there, boy. They, there's another crappie. Looks like a hog wallering out there, don't he, folks? That's a good one. Golly, that looks like a hog a wallering. Y'all hear that line? I can't tell y'all how hard this fish right here is pulling. This one is putting it on me. I'm talking. Let's net. Yeah, let's net him. That's a good one. Golly, what a big crappie. My goodness. These are slabs, folks. These are what you consider real slabs. That is a huge crappie. And uh, like I said, I didn't expect to catch them like that today. The weather's been all messed up. Um, there we go. Look at there. What a fish. Super slab right there. The weather has been so messed up here lately. I figured at best I might catch you know, a couple dozen small crappie today. But uh, been working hard here lately. Been doing quite a quite a lot of building. And I was dying to go fishing this morning. I mean, when I woke up, I was ready. Just as soon as my eyes opened. And it's been a blessed day. You never know. We think we know more than what we do when it comes to the sport of fishing. We know very little about it. Let me be honest. There's a lot of <laughs> so-called fishing scientists that believe they know everything. They're wrong. The best way to learn is come out here and learn yourself. And don't always rely on what you learned to be concrete, specific, or a perfect way of fishing, because it's not that way. I don't really know what I was trying to say, folks, but I do know this. Let's let him go. Woo. Listen to the screaming birds up on the mountain. I'll make this pretty quick, folks, because I have a video about how to modify an underspin. Not just the Roadrunner, just about any underspin that you want to use. There's a lot of different companies that make them. The two that I use the most are Roadrunner and Finesse underspins, and I do them both the same way. Now. I said this was a six, one sixteenth of an ounce Roadrunner. It is. But what I'll do right here, if you'll look up under the eyelet, the line tie, right directly up under it, about an eighth of an inch, I'll take side cutters and cut that off. So I'm getting rid of probably one half of the weight of this underspin. So I'm turning a one sixteenth into a one. 30 second by cutting it off right here right about right here with side cutters then i'm taking dental floss and wrapping around the shank of the hook twice time not now what the dental floss is for and i use a non-waxed dental floss that is to bind the plastic whatever you want to use whatever jig that you want to use now in this case i'm using a crappie magnet and I have it glued right where you see the top of that jig, that plastic hitting the top of that jig head. Well, that's where I've cut it off. So it's actually a 132nd of an ounce. What that'll do in shallow water, it will allow you to, to reel it slower, causing you to get more bites. Now, by gluing whatever bait you're wanting to use onto that hook, 
what that's going to do is going to eliminate you from having to readjust uh, the jig at all times because it's going to pull down. It won't pull down like that. You'll catch more fish. Therefore, you can focus on your fishing more than fiddling around because I understand that <laughs> when we go fishing, we want to fish. We don't want to fiddle around. We want to focus on our fishing. By doing that, you're going to catch more fish. And that's what I'm trying to teach right here. I'm trying to teach an easy way to take some fish home to eat. There he is. Oh, my, my. Another good one. Look here, folks. Let me loosen that drag just a little bit. My, my, my. <laughs> I can't tell y'all. I'd love to show. Uh, I don't know what else to say. Would you quit that? You look silly with that in your face like that. Quit. That's a big black crappie. My goodness, I might as well show this one to y'all too. These are some big, big crappie. I mean, these are some big crappie, folks. I have never used the term. Uh, I don't watch much TV. I work a lot. But uh, the term for a fish like this is a toad. Oh, dude, what a big old toad. Well, I got me a toad. Let's let him go. Go on back. What a blessed day. Lord's blessed me today. Not only to live, <laughs> but to come out here and catch some old big toads. Well, folks, I had all the fun I could stand. Today, well... An underspin was the deal. I knew it would be, account of the weather conditions. And I tell you, there's nothing finesseful about the bait when it comes to crappie fishing. It's really a power bait, and I believe it's designed for big crappie, no doubt. It has that unique action that warrants a big crappie to bite it. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all do for this channel is more than appreciated. Hey, well. And remember, go fishing when you can. Because it's good for you.